We're here this afternoon at the Green Garage, and we just wanted to talk to you about a very innovative approach that we're using for the heating and cooling. Um, as you remember, we have had this Net Zero Energy Group that has been trying to design um, a heating and cooling approach for this building, which uh, actually comes out at Net Zero Energy at the end of the day. To do that, we've had to first develop a passive design approach, which reduced our heating and cooling needs, and then we had to figure out how we're going to meet those needs. So we've come up with this system, which is a hybrid. It's called Geosolar Hybrid Heating and Cooling. And what that is, is we first use the natural heating components first, like the solar, and then to the extent that they can't meet, the, the panels can't heat the heating demand, then we take and use a geothermal approach, which uses some electricity to produce the heat. So to explain the system to you, I've got Kevin Boshi. Kevin has uh, been here working with us on our um, Net Zero Energy Group, and he is uh, from um, Strategic Energy Solutions. He's been with a group of about 10 of us that have been working on this and he'll explain what the components are and how it works. The five major components of this hybrid geothermal heating and cooling system start with the solar panels, which will be the solar collectors on the rooftop. There will be ten of these panels, which the sunlight will naturally heat the water that is piped through these panels. They will then be pumped into a domestic hot water heat exchanger, which is similar to a domestic hot water heating tank in your house. Um, from there, the, heating, the heat exchanger takes the heat from the water that is piped through that tank and supplies it to the rest of the facility for shower needs or sinks. From there, that hot water, is, the hot water that's generated from the roof is then pumped into a large uh, mass thermal storage tank which will be located inside of the building and that is like the heartbeat of the system where all of the heating energy is stored. From there, that water is pumped into a radiant floor heating system where the water is piped through the floor, through the whole entire square footage, and spaces are heated there accordingly. To supplement this system, we have a geothermal heating and cooling system. This geothermal system is a closed loop ground heat exchanger, which will supplement the loads from the solar panels on the roof. On a day where the, the loads cannot be met by the solar panels, the ground loops will circulate water through the ground and pump their heat into this thermal storage tank. From there, it just adds to the total energy stored in this thermal mass. Great. And so then, let's just talk briefly about what happens uh, in the summer then. You, we don't need the heat, right? Correct. Uh, Kevin, so what, what is going to happen in the summer? In the summertime, the panels will be covered with a, a photovoltaic or a PV panel. From there, will generate electricity for other parts or other uses throughout this facility. One of the, one of the um, unique systems that we have is, like I said, the heartbeat here, the mass thermal storage where um, cool energy will be taken or cold temperatures will be taken from the ground and pumped into this tank. And I believe the temperature there will be about 68 degrees. Yep, 68. That's from right. there, that cooler temperature water will then be pumped through the flooring system and help, to he help remove heat or cool this, this spaces. Um, the one, there will be the PV panels on the rooftop, one of them still open to the water system where that hot water will still be used in the domestic hot water storage tank uh, for hot waters and showers. Right, and, and some, uh, the people taking shower, showers will be particularly thankful for that one panel. Still have hot water. They'll still have hot water. Yeah, so we want to thank also Kevin Gardner. Uh, did this beautiful layout uh, for us of the project, and uh, it's very exciting. And one of the things is, uh, for the first year or two, we're going to be fine-tuning the system. So, you know, we're connected to nature here and the weather and uh, the sun, and then here we're connected to the earth and its temperatures. So this will be kind of a dynamic process for us to learn. This mass thermal storage is quite unique uh, for this area and uh, we're going to have to figure out uh, quite how we're going to uh, have it hold the heat in the winter and then, and then switch it over in the summer. So it, it's going to be a little, a little fun along the way. So thanks, and uh, we'll be with you um, next week with a discussion on our hybrid ventilation system.